Another excellent animal. Thank you. Hardly any point in making a close examination, but the regulations demand it. Well, we'll take him. Top dollar. How many is that? What are you? Any Paiute activity down your way? No. Nope. No sign of any in the trail, either. I understand you had a problem, huh? Yeah. I was so glad to get these remounts. We've ridden our horses to skin and bones. You raise fine horses, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you. There's a war party operating out of the hills up to the north. Headed by Wahi. Why? He was killing the Stalton Raid. Right? Well, that's what we thought. They came down with a band of reservation jumpers, looting, killing, stealing. They're harder to catch than a mirage. We did find his camp the day before yesterday. We might have had him, but we moved too soon. Nothing except a bunch of women, children, old men. Are you going after him? Yes, but not until I've delivered the prisoners to the reservation. By that time, the trail will be too cold. By the way, one of the prisoners is a white woman. Where's she from? I wish I could tell you. Her reluctance to talk is understandable, though. She's Wahi's squaw. And she's got his child, half-breed papoose. Are you taking her to the reservation? I offered her transportation to any city and town in the state. She insists on going to the reservation. You want me to talk to her? I was hoping you'd say that, Mr. Cartwright. Maybe you can get her to tell you more than just her name. What's her name? Calls herself Nam Yope. English translation, she who resists. you might know each other. May I speak with her? I have an inspection to make. I'll be back soon. Beautiful. 
for it. I live for it. Did you, uh, how long were you with Wahi? A long time. You love him? I'm his squaw. Do you love him? I lived in his teepee. I bore his son. My son. My son is all that matters. Does that answer your question? Well, you know, we're, uh, we're pulling out tomorrow morning. I'd sure like to have you come along with us. I want to go to the reservation with the other squaws. I figured we could take you to Virginia City and help you find your family. have someone somewhere. There's no one. You're sure? <coughs> have you ever been on a reservation? No. It's, it's not for you. Believe me, if you love your son, then you must think of him. I think only of him. I've never been to a reservation, but I've lived in Nevada towns before. I know the people. I know what they would do to the son of a white mother and a Paiute father. I can spare him that torment, and I will. And why do you think the reservation will be different? What do you expect to find for him there? Equality. If you don't mind, I'd like to go back to the other squaws. Of course. Now, I'd like one more favor. We're having an early supper. Consider it a kindness if you would join us. On one condition. No more questions. No questions. Hey, used to serving fancy here. Best we could do. Oh, it looks very good. Very good, thank you. Yeah. If you want seconds? Yeah. Here's the money for those remounts. The major seemed to be pleased. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Joseph, put that chair over there. We need it. Fellas, let's not have any conversation when she gets here about Wahi or what she's doing here or where she's going. Just want to make her feel like she's among friends. And what's happened to her makes no difference at all. Come in, come in, please. Uh, let's meet everybody. It's my son, Hoss. Howdy, ma'am. And my other son, Joseph. This is Candy. Well, this is uh, Namio Pei. Never meet, ma'am. Uh, let's sit down. Makes it comfortable. Well, I hope you brought your appetite with you. Mm. <laughs> Mighty good. Yeah, you know, after two weeks on the trail, there's something about just a clean tablecloth making food look good. <laughs> It's a pretty country here. How are you making out with that, that horse of yours? Him? Well, I uh, think it's a tie. He tried to kick me, and I backed him into a thistle. <laughs> you know, Candy's got a running feud with this roan horse of his. He was out chasing a stray the other day, and I... Where's one ran him into a tree and he got caught up in the limbs? <laughs> that never happened. 
funniest thing I ever saw. Old Candy hanging up that tree upside down. I think I'll just get himself another horse. <laughs> You're being very kind, all of you. You're trying very hard. But you're as uncomfortable as I am. Well, sorry. I can't help wondering what it was like, how I lived, what was done to me. You're too polite to ask. There'll be many who won't be. Oh, ma'am, it ain't that bad. We had a lady from Virginia City about seven or eight years ago that got captured by the pilot and stayed with him two or three years and came back. Did you have a baby? A half-breed baby? Mr. Cartwright, what will happen to Wahi? <clears throat> well, uh, if he surrenders... He'll never surrender. Well, if he's captured, then uh, he'll be brought to trial before an army court, and if he's found guilty, he'll, uh, he'll have to pay the full penalty. Death by hanging. Yes. If he fights, he'll be killed. You'll just have to excuse me. Alicia? Alicia Purcell. crossing you. Your husband was a cattle buyer there before the raid. Why didn't you say so? Oh, let me alone. I was waiting to hear you say that you wanted to go back home. I have no home. Yes, you have. Your husband, Wayne, he, he's in Virginia City. He spent a year searching for you. He thinks you're dead. I am dead. He's been living there for three years. If he knew that you were alive... Stop! Stop! I don't want to listen. He's your husband. He's your husband. Was and is. He wouldn't want me. He thinks I'm dead. Let him go on thinking that. What about your child? What do you want for your child? Everything. Everything. Yet you would take him to a reservation. To face a life of misery and hopelessness. There'll be no equality for your son there. Not for boys, neither white nor Indian. Only rejection. I'll talk to the Major. I have Wayne. Need us here, or, or you'll leave with us in the morning. Shippers 
myself. I was with Pa and White Fork, but I didn't see her there. Do you know her husband? Yeah. He's got a good business. He works hard. He's kind of proud and proper, though. I got nothing against him, but uh, it's the impression I got. A little too proud, maybe. Huh? That's what I was thinking. On the other hand, I was wondering what I'd do if it was me she was coming home to. Yeah, I asked myself the same question. I didn't get an answer. I sent a telegram to Wayne. I told him we'd be home in four days. I asked him to come to the Ponderosa. Talking about, I didn't cry but once. I was closer to him than you were. He was exercising his lungs. That's why babies cry, you know, to exercise their lungs. How do you know that? Speaking of exercise, Joseph, I thought you and Candy were going to build a box store. Well, yeah, we are. Where? Right here in the living room? Oh, we just finished our lunch. We're just going to play with a little fella for a few minutes. <laughs> oh, I saw Wayne Purcell at the post office. He was just waiting to make sure when we got home. Said he'd be out in about an hour. Oh, good. Hey, we, uh, we better get back to work again. Yeah. Good evening. Yeah, buddy. There you go. <laughs> Something you ought to see over here. Huh? Like the Major said, they headed northeast. They hit a ranch on Miller Creek. 200 miles from here. Sure moving fast. Yeah, they had to. Troop of cavalry on their trail. Time for this young man. He's a mighty pretty little guy. <laughs> Is Wayne coming out here? Uh, oh, yes, uh, I meant to tell you, Hans just brought the message. He'll be here within the hour. <laughs> for the last four years, I didn't think I'd ever be frightened again. Frightened now. Buxton looks terrible, but I, I've tried to fix my hair the way Wayne liked it. Your hair's beautiful, and you're beautiful. I know you're lying. Thank you. Mr. Purcell is coming down the road. All right, young lady. Got some things to do with the boys. I'll go out the back way. Have a face to yourselves. Now, smile and go meet your husband.
Yeah, it is you. It, it really is you. Where did you come from? Oh, How did you get here? The Cartwrights brought me back. The Cartwrights? After the White Fork Raiders, I searched for you for months. I, I couldn't find a trace. Come inside. Yes. Oh. Hey, you, you look wonderful. You do. There's so much to tell you. You don't have to tell me anything. Oh, what's happened doesn't matter. What's important is that we're together and we can start all over again. Oh, Wayne, please. Alicia, listen to me. I have done nothing for the past four years but work, work, work. And I've done very well. I, I've got so much to give you now, it'll make up for everything you've missed. Don't you want to know what happened to me? But I do know. I know. You were a prisoner. It was terrible. It had to be terrible. <laughs> but you escaped. Wayne, please, wait. Why? Wait here. Why? Alicia? Alicia, where are you going? I'll, I'll be I'll be right back. It's all right. my son. Or do you know? Yes, I know. It's Wahis. I was his prisoner, his squaw. Why? Murder that red handed butcher. And you dare bring this home? What was I supposed to do? He's my son, too. He's my flesh and blood. Should I have pretended he was never born, just walk away and leave him? I thought you were dead. I could live with that. But this, how in heaven's name do you expect me to feel? I don't know, Wayne. I truly don't know. A filthy savage. Didn't that matter to you? Yes, it mattered. But I'm a coward. I didn't want to die. Coward. No. There's another name for a woman like you. I ask one kindness of you. Go away. Quickly. And gladly.
cousin in Omaha. What do you expect to find in Omaha? A home for myself and my son. I suppose your cousin feels the same way your husband did. Mr. Cartwright, it's none of your business. I took your advice once. I don't need or want any more of it. what would happen, and I was right. Yes. And I was wrong. I should have prepared, Wayne. But since I brought you here, I'd sure like to know what happens when you leave. If my cousin won't have us, we'll go to the reservation. Sure is a handsome child. May I? Come up here, young fella. There we are. Well, you know, I sure do like you. Yes, sir, I like you a lot. You know what that means? No, how could you? You don't know the meaning of the word like or love or hate or any of those things. It just sounds as far as you're concerned. You're too young to understand them. Yes, and you're too young to, to know that right now people hate you because of the accident of your birth. But you're not too young to understand that, are you? You're willing to hide him or take him to the reservation? To protect him, yes. To protect him or yourself. Tell me, is it because that you're so worried about what people think about you that you want to hide him? You're even willing to hide yourself? Why hide? There's a simple solution. More advice, Mr. Cartwright? Yes. There's a good orphanage near Sacramento run by the Catholic sisters. They'd love to have a child like this. Why don't I have Joseph hitch up a, a team to the buggy? Then you can take him there tonight. And that way, there'd be no child, no problem, simple solution. Oh, damn you, Ben Cartwright, if you think for one oh, minute... Oh, yes, you're willing to fight for him, are you? Good. And why run? Why not fight right here in Virginia City? <laughs> Not. <laughs> Was that on the porch the last five or ten minutes? Got a little loud in here. Yes, I guess it did. Now, what happens now? I wish I knew. Town, although I'm not an expert. You do have business at the bank. Yes, of course, but I, I want to introduce you to Elizabeth Bowen. I'd rather you didn't. If I'm going to stay in Virginia City, I have to face these people. I might just as well start here and now. I'll meet you back here. I, I, the neckline is so good. Yes, but well, what about this? I'll be with you in a minute, huh? I'm in no hurry. Uh, then there's the waistline. Maybe, look, maybe this dress. 
Mrs. Moore, what you had in mind? Hmm? Oh, yes, this is attractive. This is very attractive. Wonder ladies, my baby is Paiute. Half Paiute. This is lovely. Oh, oh yes, it's, it's pure silk. The very finest quality. And just the color I've been looking for. I want this silk made up in the dress you just showed me. I want the material now. But, Mrs. Smith, I And I don't want the cloth that's been unrolled from the boat. something? You're as pretty as a $40 filly. Now, on account of your so pretty, old hate's gonna buy you a drink. Come on. Let me go. Oh, come on. Now, don't get mad. I'm trying to be nice. Together. I don't even mind the baby. Think you're too good for me, huh? <laughs> Ain't no woman carrying no pile of brat too good no. for me. No, stay away. No. No, stop it. No, stop! <laughs> Up you go. Andy, I want you to take Alicia and her son back to the Ponderosa. Mr. Cartwright, if there's trouble here. Nothing I can't handle. You dropped your hat. <laughs> well, I never even seen Carl Wright till after I was down. I mean, he, uh, he snuck up on me, you know, hit me from behind. Well, he didn't even give me a fair chance. This will make you the biggest cattle broker in Virginia City. Thanks to you, Mr. Green. No, thanks, Astor wanted. I burned it. Carrying a Paiute kid, ain't she? Well, she ain't no better than a Paiute. I don't care what Ben Cartwright says. And I'll tell him so right to his face. Do that. Go ahead, I'm listening. Well, uh, we're in uh, buckskins and then carrying that baby. Well I, well, I thought she was a Paiute. She's not a Paiute, but even if she was Yeah, well, she sure ain't. She's less than a Paiute. Well, she's less than dirt. Now, Miss Purcell is a guest in my house. If you raise your voice to her or try to touch her, I'll see to it that you're put in jail. Yeah, well, there ain't no law against talking to the likes of her. There's a law protects women on the street. I'll see to it that it's enforced. Decent women, yes. But not trash. One more thing, Hank. Not only will you go to jail, but it'll take some while for you to recover your health before you're able to stand trial. That's a promise. Here we 
were saying. No, better than she should be. We can all see that. Can we? Now, suppose it had been your wife that was taken prisoner. What would you want her to do? Kill herself? Mr. Barry? You've got a sister. You love her very much. I suppose she'd been taken prisoner. How would you treat her when she came back? I don't know. Mm -hmm. You don't know. Do you know, Mr. Rogers? You have two beautiful daughters. Suppose it happened to one of them, and she had the strength and the courage to survive. Now, what would you do when your friends and neighbors turned their backs on her? That ain't ever going to happen to my daughters. Ain't never going to happen to your daughters. That's what everybody thinks. That's what everybody likes to think. It'll never happen to one of theirs. Well, it's happened before. And it could happen again. It could happen to someone very near and dear to you. So you'd better start figuring how you'd feel. Yeah. Start figuring. It's been a good day. See you tomorrow. I waited until your sons were gone. There's something I have to tell you. Mr. Cartwright, I'm leaving in the morning. I realize if my son's gonna have any chance at all, it'll be in a big city like San Francisco or New York. Virginia said he has something that no other place can offer you. Your husband. I have no husband. Maybe. But when you had need of help, you saw his name on that sign. You turned to him. Didn't you? Didn't you? Well, Mrs. Fletcher. Good evening, Mr. Good Cuthbert. evening, Mrs. Smith. Come in, please. Nice to see you. Come in. You know, uh, you know Mrs. Marcel? Uh, please, yes. come sit down. Oh, oh, no. We are here to, well, to speak for the Virginia City Women's Club. We were very distressed over what happened today. Yes, that was very distressing. But ladies, please sit down. Oh, uh, thank you. But, uh, uh, we were afraid that something similar, perhaps worse, might happen again. Yes. To prevent that, to help you and your child, we've taken up a collection. And we are prepared to help you find a new home, a, a new start, someplace like uh, Carson City, Reno, someplace where you and your child will feel more comfortable. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Your kindness is overwhelming. The truth is you want to get rid of us. That's oh, the truth, that... isn't it? You hate me, you hate my child so much that you're willing to pay to get us out of sight. That that well, it won't I work. Said. We're not dirt. We won't be swept away. The only way you can help us now is to let us alone. Now get out, both of you. <laughs> Ladies. I shouldn't have done that. I thought you did very well. I think I'm going to cry.
son's been asleep for hours. It's time I joined him. Busy place tonight. Hello. This is your night for company. It sure is. I passed a couple of your guests down the road apiece. They're now my ex-customers. Oh, Mrs. Purcell, good evening. I, I brought the silk you liked. You disappeared so quickly that I never had a chance to tell you that I'd be delighted to make a dress for you. Ten dresses, if you wish. Oh, thank you. Not at all. Oh, Ben. I heard what you said in the Silver Dollar Bar. I must have heard ten different versions of it. You certainly have the whole town talking. Is that good or bad? Mm, both, I guess. Tell me, have you got a room, a spare room here we can use? No, several upstairs. Fine. Then we can get started. Come along. Here, we won't be needing you, Ben. This is woman's work. That's a very handsome boy. I brought along some yard goods and some dress patterns for him, too. Beautiful. No, it's easy with a pretty customer. Hey, now she's blushing. I think it makes her even prettier. <laughs> you had me crying again. Stop it. <laughs> You've been so kind, all of you. Could I ask one more favor? Name it. Tomorrow's Sunday. I'd love to go to church. My pleasure. Yes, sir. I tell you, I don't know if that bonnet makes you look more like a boy or a girl, but your booties make you look like a boy. Do you like your new clothes? Huh? Huh? <laughs> yes, sir. You betcha. <laughs> well, you know, you're a remarkable woman. You're not only beautiful, but you're on time. Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, I should have the buggy ready. <laughs> Correct, and he brought the story. Any reason? Well, I thought maybe I'd go with you. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, help you in. So you go to church, too? Yeah, we thought we would. All right. Nice to see you both. Mrs. 
Purcell. Mr. Cartwright. Morning. She's a ponderosa. I tried to build him just like yours. He's not so big and not so grandiose, but it's still a nice house. Oh, Joe, it's a fine house. <laughs> fine. Yeah. And the clothes, they're not so much Italian. Uh, you look like a regular cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Hello, Gina. How are you? Hello, nice to see you. Hello, Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? This, is, uh, this is Candy. Candy, this is Gina. <laughs> Well, hey, everybody, come on, sit down. I want you to taste the wine. Good, oh, good. Oh, I got a taste. I want you all to taste the Divino de Ponderosa, which I name for my friend, the Ben Cartwright's uh, ranch. Thank you. With your permission. Oh, of course. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll drink to that. Vino de Ponderosa, huh? Well, I'm not finished. The second reason I ask you is to tell you that when I live in Italy, I work at the land. The land is in a mine. The Baron, who owned the land, he come to me and say, Giorgio, someday you're going to be my best man. No, Giorgio Rossi said, nobody else is a man. I think all the time, inside, I think someday I go to America. I get my own land. I think you're a son of Americano, honorario. That means I'm an honorary Americano. <laughs> <laughs> I think all the time, America. I dream America. Then, five years ago today, I become American citizen. Ah. <laughs> now you can make applause. It's a celebration then. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. still not to finish. To me, the wine is like a mirror of America's heart. I look inside and I see the faces of many friends. I see much hard work and the sorrow, but I also see the future for the world. I see freedom for everybody and trust. And now I come to another reason why I ask you here. Now I return to the trust which my friend Ben Cartwright to give to me when he lend me money for buy the wine press. Hey, is the United States money good at any bank? <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Uh, I'm not finished. <laughs> And now, I want to tell you that this is only the beginning for Giorgio Rossi and the son. We're going to make a wine. Everybody in the whole world is going to know about the Vino de Ponderosa. Well, we'll that. that. Now we can uh, drink because I finish. I sit down. Giorgio, there's, uh, there's nothing I can add to what you've already said, except to say that we're all very happy and proud. You're not only a neighbor, but a friend. Cheers. Sure. Drink to that. Yeah. See, yeah, I drink to that too. Howdy. 
My name is Gil Saban. I bought the trainer outfit. My land borders this place. Why you put the rope on this man? He's no animal. Ask him. He not believe. This man told me I could drink a spring. Did you tell him that, Junior? I say he can camp in a drink. Is it my land and my water? You won't have it long, Mr. Rossi, if you let every ragged reservation jumper that comes along dip into it. What is this uh, reservation jumper? Well, it's someone who stays away from the reservation. There's only one man and one horse. How much can they drink? This one's got a teepee set up. And a squaw and a young'un moved in. There's another brave waiting up on the butte. And he probably wants to move in with a squaw and family. It's still two families, all right. There's still enough of water. That's not the point. The point is, these Indians are off their reservation. Now, you know what that can mean, Mr. Cartwright. Yes, I know. I'll, uh, I'll explain it to Mr. Rossi. Nobody have to explain it to me. It's my land and my water. The Indians, they stay on my land. It's all right, Red Sky. You can go. Go back to your wife and the family. You stay on the land, drink the water. And you, you, you know like trouble. I'm a United States a citizen and know my rights. You know who's gonna get off of my land? You! my friend of the Indian like an animal. They're making me lose my appetite. They spoiled it all fast. I can't eat. You lose your appetite, too? What happened to the Indian? It was a bad thing. Huh? Come on, eat, uh, Giorgio. Well, I can't. Listen to the Indians, how they sing. <laughs> They're very happy, huh? <laughs> Make me very happy, too. Hmm. I got a single for you. Libia, mo, Libia, mo, Libia, mo. La, 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 Again, thank you so much, and I like the house very Excuse my George, Emma, you know how I am. Candy? Yeah. Don't uh, stick around too long. Make a pest yourself. Uh, I'll be right along. Bye-bye, Nick. Good night, Good night, Good night, night, Good night, Good night, Good night Joe. Good night. Good night. He's a nicer boy, this Candido. Look how nice they look together. Come see, come see. You know... I, I think it's time Regina get married. Oh, que far. What for? What's a hurry? Oops. Sorry. Why? Well, uh, I don't know. You talk fine when you talk about horses and cows and Indians. If you like me, it's no reason to be sorry. Well, it's... Just that you're different. From a horse or a cow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Do you know our Italian custom? No. We don't take our feelings lightly. Neither do I, Regina. Land. 
It makes me afraid. Sometimes I think I will never get used to the, the bigness, the cruelty I see here. Maybe I will never belong to this life. There is cruelty here, yes. Regina, look at the sky. It's big and black and empty, right? Well, there's another way of looking at it. It can be like a warm blanket on a cold night. There is gentleness here if you look for it. Uh, Regina. I have to get up early in the morning. Tomorrow I go see the Indian. Is it time we go to bed? Yes, Papa. Candy, maybe you better go with Papa. Sometimes he doesn't understand so good. Sure. I'll go with you, Mr. Rossi. Maybe I can be of some help. Help? <laughs> Thank you. I don't need the help. You can come if you like. Thank you. Night, Candidor. Good night, Miss Rossi. Regina. Good night. Good night. Friends, they come visit them, huh? Yahweh, Ika Kimowaki. No, no, that's his family. Oh. Yahweh, Iwawapaki. What did he say? That guy prays to the great spirit of the sea, land, and sky. Yahweh, yes, Iwelolaki. To send gentle winds and rains that fall softly. It's beautiful. Red sky is a beautiful prayer. Is it just like a poem? And don't you worry. I'm your brother. You stay long as you like. Yeshe ni nati. Tebele tanagua. Loko chi. Yesha piege. Pijo pi. Use of the water. You stay on the land. Why, brother, speaks good words. His land, our land. That's right. The United States is a big country. There's a plenty of land for everybody. Kihaya chimabe, kikonena. Now, what's he say? Uh, he says your kindness will become a legend. Who? Hmm? Kikonena. Well, what is that? He's given you an Indian name. What he called me? White man who gave us the land. Red the sky, non capisce. Come si dice? Red the sky, you misunderstand. You see, when I say you stay on the land, I mean you use the land. We just land, you see. Yeah, there's nothing to worry about, you see. They're just going to use them with the land. So, well, see, they don't intend to use the land. I think you've given it to them. Oh. This is seed. We will plant seeds in land. Use land to grow food. See, it's a, it's a seed. Semi <laughs> Grand Turco is a corn seed. <laughs> you know how to plant the corn. I plant. Ma, not like a Giorgio Rossi. Giorgio Rossi is a farmer. You see these so hands? Rossi, they... These are handed the hand of the farmer. <laughs> My father is a farmer before me, and before him, his father was a farmer. Ma, come, everybody, you come. Giorgio Rossi is going to show you how to plant the corn. Yeah. Come on, come yeah. on. Yeah. Ah. 
First, make a nice and deep hole. Is it hard to dirty? Then you push him in one seat. Not too deep, because you push him in too deep, it's no grow. Eh? Maybe it's a rock. It's too high, then it's dry out, you know? Then you make a little mound of dirt. Then you push him in another one away, push him in another one, so on and so on and so on. Eh? You understand? You got a question? Why question? Indians show white men how to plant corn long time ago. Uh, let's see. Well, I forget. Please excuse me, but uh, I have to go water the grapes. <laughs> I see you later, my brother. <laughs> my brother. My sister. <laughs> my sister. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Sì. Come to bed. Non posso dormire. All right, we talk if you can sleep. Vieni, vieni un po' qua vicino a me. Yeah, I, I, I think about the red sky. I think about his family, his people. How can I tell them to get off of the land? You talk good American. You just say please, e loro se ne andranno. No, 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 non capisci. I make a mistake. Now the Indians, they think the land belongs to them. Belong to them? Ma come? Is it a place for the white grapes? Si. I can't tell them to get off the land. I think... Uh, I remember when Ben Carter right, he said to us, we have to get off the land. <laughs> I say to him, I'm American citizen. I know my rights. United States is a bigger country. There's a plenty of land for everybody. I got a right to stay here. Red the sky. Is American a citizen? Uh, is American a citizen even before me? Now, if it's a right for Giorgio Rossi, American a citizen, why is it no right for Red the sky, American a citizen? Illogical, no? Oh, George. In the whole world, there's no one like you. Si, Giorgio Rossi is stupid. No, you smart. Zito. Look, Giorgio. This is a big country. There's lots of land, lots of other places. Si. Ma testa dura. Why I not think of this before? Ben Cartwright. Mm. He got lots of places. Dunque, non ci pensare più e vieni a dormire, vai, su. Vieni a dormire, caro, su. Ecco. Ah. So, all of a sudden, Mr. Rossi's got urgent business with his grapes, and away we go. Imagine trying to teach an American Indian how to plant corn. The minute he saw this easy, clean forgot what we came for. Well, oh, once a farmer, always a farmer. Oh, good one. How did Ben Cut, right? I bring you some wine. Oh, I bring you a message. Regina, she says, say hello. I say something funny? No, no. Boys, go on back to work. I want to talk to Georgia. <laughs> nice to see you all again. Horses. Sorry, Miss Rosie. Hi. Giorgio, you try to teach an Indian how to plant corn is like me trying to teach you how to plant grapes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I make a little mistake. Yes, you did. You went up there to get Red Sky back to the reservation, and you wound up inviting him to stay. Well, it's no right to just to go in and tell a man he must leave. I have to have time to think. And what did you think? I. I make a mistake, another mistake. <laughs> Forget all about it, bring you wine. Vino de Panderos, I know all for you. <laughs> e migliore de vino tutto el mondo. <laughs> we'll have some Vino de Panderos a little later. I want to know what you have been thinking, Giorgio. Well, I, I think that the Indians, maybe they don't have to leave if they have some land of their own. 
But, but I only have a little bit of land. Giorgio. Even if I give them a little bit of my little piece, it's still not going to be enough. Giorgio, I want But you, you got the more land than you can I... account. You want me to give them some of my land? Ben, you've been thinking the same thing. I've been trying to tell you this and get this through your head. It isn't what you would like to see happen. It isn't what I would like to see happen. It's what the United States government says mm -hmm. must happen. Now, they have signed a treaty with the Indians. The Indians live in some land given them by the government. This land is the reservation where they live, and they must live on that, or there can be serious consequences. What kind of a treaty is it says that the people got to go someplace where they don't want to go? This treaty has become a law. And we must obey the law, Jojo. You will admit to that? The law, he don't tell me what I got to do with my land. The man is a hungry. You want me to say to him, I don't want you to be hungry over here. I want you to be hungry someplace else. Now, now, Jojo, of, of course I agree with you. You know that I do. It's, it's just that I know what I'm talking about. Now, it, the longer you take to get Red Sky to go back to the reservation, the worse it's going to be for his family and the more dangerous. Now, believe me. If you don't want to talk to him, I'll be very glad to go out. Why do why you got to talk? I can't talk for myself. Well, I didn't say that you couldn't talk for no, yourself. No, I'm going to tell you something. Red Sky make me his brother. Nobody tell George Rossi his brother going to go, he's going to stay. Except the George Rossi. Lorenzo and Regina. They're coming. Don't hit the wall with the chair. When are we going to have a meeting? It's very important. Everybody's on time. In fact, it's very un-American to be late. You hit the wall. Ah, sit down. We're going to have an exercise in a democracy. Hey, Papa, I was... Sit. Sit. Now, in a democracy, the biggest number is always right. So we're going to have a meeting. First you talk, then I talk, then we vote. Don't hit the wall. Now, Ben Cartwright, he's a very good friend, eh? He's also a very smart man. He says that we should send the Indians back to the reservation. I say we should let them stay. Just a few weeks, maybe. You're the father. We do what you say. Uh, it's another American way. First we talk, then we vote. Candy says that he... Candy says? I who care what the Candy say. He's no member of the family. I think maybe you can't make up your mind because you... I can't make up my mind. Hey, I make up my mind very good. Uh, I you think I raise a family can make up my mind. You ever raise a family? All right, Regina, now you talk. You don't listen. Who don't listen? Hey, I listen very good. I just know I can listen to what the candy says. Number one, you're going to tell the Indians to go, no? See. Si. Well, you put it off. So they think they can stay, no? See. Si. Candy says that you shouldn't put it off. Again, what the candy says. How many times I tell you don't want to hear what the candy says? No more. You want us to say what we think, but only if we think the way you do. You never let us finish talking. You stop Lorenzo, you stop me. Hey, hey. You don't talk like that to your papa. No, 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 let her talk. That's the American way. I just want to remember what she say. I don't want to know more about what the candy says. And one more thing. You still not too big for me to push you over my knee upside down? Oh, come on, please, papa. Non incominciare, vai. No, no, no. I just don't like to hear her say a papa's a tyrant. 
Maybe you like it this candy too much, huh? Maybe you like to have him and take care of you, put a roof over your head, take care of you when you're sick. No, not for the fuel. Regina! Viene qua! Regina! Regina! E qua! Yeah, he's really a fine figure of a man, isn't he, Russ? Yeah, yeah, he is. He's, he's just rugged enough to keep from being pretty. <laughs> Have your fun, boys. I'm having mine. Well, Candy, I know you appreciate the fact that Regina is something very special. I'm just paying a call on the girl, Mr. Carr, right now, not courting her. Oh, yeah, but that, that's just the way it starts out. And you get over there and you get to looking in them big brown eyes and then phew, the trap springs. Wrong. Oh, everything is wrong. I don't live in that house anymore. He hates me. He hates you, too. Like I'm five years old, he treats me. Well, no more. La commedia finita. I won't go back. I won't. Well, well, simmer down now, Regina. What, uh, let's sort this out. You hate me also? Regina, nobody hates you. Oh, Candy. You love me, Candy. Only you. I work for you. I scrub the floors, I cook, I sew. Anything. Maybe in the beginning we don't have so much. Yeah, but... Oh, but look, Ozzy, he's speechless with joy. Yeah. Oh. Other young married people have less to start. Isn't it so, Mr. Cartwright? Well, Regina, I think before people get married, they should get to know each other quite well, and marriage isn't based on economic problems. But I love Candy very much. You do? Of course I do. No me importa se la vita sarà dura. We love each other. Um, uh, Regina? Uh, Regina? Look there. Why don't we, uh, why don't you stay here overnight? And then we can talk about this sensibly in the morning, huh? Come on, run along. That's right. I must say, Oz, that the boy has a lot more charm than we ever gave him credit for. Yeah, and all wasted. Very funny, very funny. <laughs> hey, you know, you know that, that little cave up on the hill where we used to play? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, with a, with a feminine touch, that, that could be awfully home. No, no it's, it's just not funny anymore. It's just not funny! <laughs> <laughs> all right, fellas, all right. Now, Joseph, I want you to ride over to the Rossies and tell them that Regina's here. They're probably worried about her. And tell her that we'll look after her real good until the smoke clears. Right. Hey, uh, you know, Candy, maybe you ought to run up there and kind of calm her down. Hoss, you think you might make some coffee for all of us, huh? Yes, sir. <clears throat> A whole bottle of Brooksham mm. Blue. Put Indian on a rope. Your Indian? Well, as good a way as any to get him here. He's my Indian, see. I, he live on my land. But you still not tell me why you have to always tie Indian up with a rope. Don't think I could have got him here any other way. Alive. 
You see, I caught him killing one of my steers. Non è possibile. I don't believe. Ask him. Is it true? Did you kill a steer? Hungry. Squall hungry. Oh, Dio mio, Maria. Sì, George. Nostri amici sono e fame. Oh, poveretto. Diamogli qualche cosa a noi. Abbiamo tanta grazia di Dio. Adesso ci penso ah. io, eh? I've been through this, Mr. Rossi. Back in the Dakota Territory. Indians moved in. More Indians followed. They had to steal to eat. And that started the fighting. Bad fighting, Mr. Rossi. People were killed on both sides. I don't want that to happen here. We are kind of responsible, Mr. Sabin. We will pay for this deer if the Indian can have it. That's a good thought, son. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I'm the father. I make the bargains here, eh? How much do you want for your steer, Mr. Sabin? Twenty-five dollars. Vendici. That's dollars. a fair price, Papa. I decided the fair price. I make the money, I spend the money. You spend your own money. I have no money. Uh, ecco, questa è, è un sacco di farina di Gran Turco. Prendetela. Potrete farvi tanta polenta e levarvi tutta la fame. Ce n'è per voi e per tutta la vostra famiglia. Povera gente. Uh, get your women down there. Take home that beef. Go on. Tell you what, Mr. Rossi, I'll split the price with you. Split the price? What do you think, I'm a poor man? Huh? You think I can't afford Indians? Huh? Yeah. Uh, hey. How much for the next one, Mr. Sabin? No price for the next one, son. Oh, you mean the next one is for free, huh? If there is another one, I'll do what every man has to do when his property is threatened. Oh? I'll fight. What's the matter? Mr. Saban is right. Oh, Mr. Saban is right this time, wrong, yes. Huh? Now, can't you get it through your head? You are wrong. Mm. Mr. Saban is trying to explain to you the Indians can't help it. Now, if they don't go back to that reservation, they're going to cause trouble. Mr. Saban, it causes trouble. The Indians are hungry. Now, you've got to tell them to oh, go. I got to. Go I... where they can what find food to keep them alive. alive. Papa, what to do? Oh, that's my head. Yell, yell, hit me. No, George. Basta adesso. Arrivederci. Lorenzo, no, no. Oh, vergognati, va! E sta a sentire tuo figlio qualche volta! Chiaccarone! Con la bocca! Mi sembra una pentola che bolle! E falla finita qualche volta! It's a question of balance. Only women know these things. Ah... Uh, that chair belongs there, yes. Uh, no. Turn the table just a little. There, there, that's it, that's it. Now, you see? See what a difference a woman's touch can make. Oh, we'll have a beautiful home, Candy. I'll get the door. That is, if it hasn't been moved. Mr. Cartwright, I have come to work for you. Lorenzo! Regina. It is good, Lorenzo. When Candy and I are married and we have a house, you can come and live with us. Yes? Marie, what are you doing with the clothes? What it looks like, don't you see? It's your children's clothes. Children who don't live here no more. Oh, uh... You want them to go without clean clothes just to because they don't live here no more? Huh? I teach my children to be clean, so I send them clean clothes. Well, but they're going to come back. Oh, yeah? When? Show me. Look out the window. You see them coming back? No, they don't come back because their father sent my children away. I mi figlio è cacciato. Ma calma, ma calma. Ah, per il tuo Ma cercato tu, tu vuoi il parere degli altri, tu credi ma non è mica vero. Howdy. 
Rossi? Is he, Giorgio Rossi? My name is Sam Kettle. I'd uh, like to talk to you. Mr. Kettle, the police are coming. May I present to my wife, Mrs. Maria Rossi, and Mr. Sam Kettle. How do you, Mr. Kettle? Yeah, Mr. Rossi. Uh, Mr. Kettle, what I can do for you? You like to buy some wine? No. I'm here about Indians. Indians? Yes. I'm the government land manager and Indian agent, and I've just learned that you have Indians on your land. See, I have Indians on my land. Did you give them the land? No, no, I, I don't give them. I just to let them stay. That's good. You see, the government has a treaty with these Indians, and they're not supposed to leave their reservation. But they will leave it if anybody gives them property outside of the reservation. I'm sick and tired, Mr. Kettle. Everybody's telling me what to do with my land. The Indians, they have a right to stay on the land, and now you leave. Mr. Rossi, it's the law. I didn't make the law, but it's part of my job to enforce it. It's a bad law. Change him. Mr. Rossi, the federal troops will move in and take them off unless you send them back. Mr. Kettle, the Indians are going to stay in the land. Goodbye. Georgia, why you be like that? Why you don't listen to the man? Why are you so hard headed? Listen to the other people too sometime. Ma lo sai che c'è il testone? Testone dalla forza di cento cavalli. Anche i tuoi figli hanno cento. C'è qualcuno nel pollaio. Presto, presto. Senti che fai passo. They're hungry, eh? Hungry to your farm, eh? Oh, ma sto diventando. Pigliate la cara, anche se vuoi delle uova, anche pigliale. Oh, povera creatura, ma come sto diventando? Ma scemo, mi scemo, mi scemo, io non mi riconosco. Parla in inglese, eh? No, it's not just the chicken, it's my children too. Lorenzo, regina, be God. I can live like this. E why? What you? Tu sei la colpa. Mia? Sì, tu, ah, tutta tua. Perché sempre mia? Perché ti arrabbi sempre, urli con Perché mi colpa mia? Non lo fa mai dire una parola sola. Ma perché non hanno rispetto? Ma io non posso più stare a vivere così. Ma la mia colpa è sempre tua. Ma io non posso più stare Regina, e poi Lorenzo, e adesso Maria. Ma l'ho piantato. E bravi. Che bella famiglia! Mm. Sorry, right, Giorgio, you speak English, eh? Why always everybody tell you what to do, eh? How she you want to tell me what to do? I decide what to do about the Indians, huh? I decide what's right and wrong. Lorenzo, this is the way I raise my son, huh? You tell your papa what to do, huh? You talk back to your papa. Regina, you beautiful girl. Why you always have to tell me, can they say this, can they say that? 
Don't even know you, Papa. Love you. You're Italian in the family. They raise it to respect it, the Papa. Why you not can do that? Huh? What are you? Ain't that good husband, man? Eh? Don't I build you a beautiful house? What I do wrong? Don't I buy you food? Don't I make it nice? <laughs> what I got it? Out. If it does, this will work out too. Yeah, well, in the meantime, what do we eat? Sweet and sour pizza. Miseria. Miserable. Basta, finita la commedia. Giorgio Rossi, you're just like a woman, you can make up your mind. You gotta do something about it. You gotta do something now. You gotta do something right now. Well, I came as soon as I got your note. Sorry it took so long. Well, government red tape, what do you expect? Well, no harm has been done. Rossi's Indians haven't got into any real bad trouble. Now, thanks to you, I can put them where they belong. Oh, are you free to go? Yes, just as soon as you can get there. Good day, my brother. Good day. Judge Yoros is coming to tell you that he make up his mind. I give you this land. I want you to use it. I'm American a citizen. I can give it to another American a citizen. I know my rights. It's a free country. Well, what is going on here? 
and go go to our son. Why? Ma, I bring you food. You don't have to steal it no more. Ma, and when you eat them up, you let me know I bring you more. But I want you to stay on the land. I help you. I help you plant the grapes even if you want. I help you plant the more corn. Please, you stay. Man, not much good for corn. No, I see what is going on. Oh, Ben, the cut, you're right. You come onto my land, huh? You tell them my Indians, they have to go back to the reservation. The reservation is like a jail. Now, Giorgio, hold on now. They're not going back to the same reservation. Not the same? Ma, what do you mean? Well, uh... Well, Sam Kettle and I have persuaded the, the land bureau that they, uh, they should add a, another parcel of land to the reservation. New piece of government land, the, the Crow Lake area. That way they'll have the whole lake, all that bottom land, and, well, plenty of fresh water and sweet grass and all that good game. I know land. Good place. We like to live there. We stay. Don't come here again. Is this true? Yeah. <laughs> God bless you. Take the food, the red sky. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. A salute. 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 Bon dia, no? And now, I have an announcement to make about my daughter, Regina. Oh, no. Uh -huh. No, Papa. No? no? Why not? I changed my mind. I come in my again. Figlia mia, is it three times you change your mind? Ma che fai? What's the matter? Candy's a good man, but not like Italian boy. I better wait for Italian. <laughs> now, I want to thank my friend Ben Cartwright for what he do for my Indians. <laughs> and what he do for me. <laughs> Giorgio Rossi always get in a fix. And Ben Cart writes, he get him out. <laughs> so I want to tell you, from now on, uh, George Ross is a change man. No more fix. <laughs> uh, for this, I drink to myself. <laughs> well, uh, in that case, I would like to say something. I would like to drink to George Rossi. But George Rossi must remain always as he is. Here, here, here. Here, here. Chicken cacciatore. <laughs> you drew two cars, huh? Mm, yeah, that's right. Huh. I'll see you raise your tent. Up to you, Charlie. And up another 50. And 50 more. Shower down, gentlemen. Well, what are you, practicing to be a, a burglar, betting that kind of money on a two-car draw? My hot streak got you a little nervous, huh? Mm -hmm, yes. Forget it. Oh, you're going to quit with all that money in your pocket? No, and it's going to stay in my pocket the way your luck's been running. Well, Mr. Beggs, just two of us left. What's your pleasure? See you and raise you one thousand dollars. <laughs> What's this? You know the Lost Creek mine and stamp mill? Uh, what I hear that mine played out a long time ago. No, it is, but the stamp mill's still in good shape, or will be as soon as Ludwig finishes the repair job. What you've got in your hand is the stamp mill, and it's worth a sight more than a thousand dollars. Doesn't take much of a stamp mill to be worth a thousand dollars. It's a fair bet, then? Mm-hmm. Mr. Beggs, do us both a favor and put this back in your pocket. Either see it or throw in your cards. Well, 
Because I've only got about $500. You give me that $500 in your pocket, I could call him. <laughs> hey, you want me to loan you the $500 I got for my horses, the money I'm going to put in the bank? Loan me nothing. I want you to buy half my bet, and then when I win the mine, we'll be in business. We'll be partners. You're going to win the mine, we'll be partners. What makes you think you got them beat? This. <laughs> and queens. Queen high, straight flush. Well, partner, we're in business. <laughs> oh, but by the way, what do you, uh, what do you know about Stan Mills? About what? That's what I thought. I have a feeling I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning regretting this. Here's our mill. Well, you know, it looks pretty good from here, yeah. partner. First thing we got to do is get a crew of men, about 20 or 30. Well, what for? To work on these roads, get them in top shape. Oh, well, what's our hurry? Well, once we get the mill running, we'll have oil wagons coming in here from all directions, day and night. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's get the mill started, and then we'll take care of the roads, huh? Well, yeah, that's what I meant. Disposition like a bear with a thorn in his paw. <laughs> hey, who we got out there? How should I know? Somebody don't like stamp mills, I guess. Shoot! Those men tried to blow up my mill. Uh, simmer down, we Ludwig, get gone. Get so excited you blow yourself up. Uh, come, let me repay you with a little schnapps. Sounds good. Uh, partner, I think we've uh, inherited a lot of lumber and machinery here. Huh? Yeah, we sure have. Yeah, you want us a mill? All we got to do now is win the war. Huh? Yeah. for my good friends. Yeah. For what you did, thank you. Uh, hey, Ludwig, who do you think's trying to blow this place up? Huh? <laughs> I can guess. Miles Renfro. He's tried it before. Miles Renfro, he owns uh, a couple of stamp mills, doesn't he? Three mills on the Carson River. A nice man he seems to be, but he's not. Now, we're gonna give him a little competition now. See, Candy and I just won this place in a poker game. Queen High Straight Flush. Who from? Beggs. Jason Beggs. Jason Beggs. He owns only 40%. What? 40%? But who owns the rest? A woman named Kelly. She inherited her shares from her father. Congratulations, partner. You just won yourself half of 40% of a war. 
Well, if 40% is better than nothing, we'll just get the place in shape, that's all. We gotta find her other partner first. Oh, she will be here soon. She will sell you her stock or put up her shares of the expenses. Either way, the meal runs. It makes it sound so easy. Now I know it is my Renfro. He held you one Dex shares in a poker game. Oh, there's Grace. Ludwig Payne. Can we prove it's Renfro? No. Prove? Yeah. Huh. How? Renfro hires men from other places to do his dirty work. These men, they don't talk. Nice man. A few things I need, just to get started. I well, know we better go back to that poker game. What for? We gotta win ourselves a hardware store. We better get these things ordered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You take the big one, I'll take the little one. Hey, come on, leave the lady alone, will you? Go find your own girl, buddy. You're not the sheriff. I'm not the sheriff. No, you're not the sheriff. Uh, Ma'am, I'm Joe Cartwright. Uh, my name's Kennedy. My friends call me Candy. Hello. Let me take that for you. Is your friend all right? Oh, yeah, he's fine. Fine, don't worry about him. Oh, how can I ever thank you? Uh, my pleasure. I'm wondering, is it always so exciting here in Virginia City? Well, not always. Oh, no, no. Uh, sometimes whole weeks go by and hardly anything happens at all. <laughs> You've written on the lady. Uh, we help you carry your bag? You're so kind. Good idea. The hotel's right down here. Oh, there's, uh, there's another bag there. You be here long, Miss, uh, uh... Kelly. Katie Kelly. Katie Kelly? Yes. Uh, well, you wouldn't by any chance be interested in stamp mills. Well, just one. The Lost Creek stamp mill. May I meet your new partners? Me too. Uh, I'm delighted. So am I. Shall we go? Yes. You three are going to run the Lost Creek stamp mill, huh? Yeah, that's right. We already started. We took a load of hardware out there this afternoon. Yeah, when we uh, took Miss Kelly out to see the mill. Had you ever seen a stamp mill before? No, I never had. It was really exciting. Just exactly what do you two know about ore processing? Well, Ludwig's going to show us how. Oh. Ludwig. Make some coffee, Mo. Uh, thank you. I think I need something a little stronger. Well, I fix that, too. Thanks, so. sir. Yes, thank you. Now, well, before you go into business, you ought to know what the market is and who the competition is. Well, the large mines process their own ore. Small mines can't afford to, so they have somebody else do it for them. Well, right. Well, that's where we come in, huh? Well, a lot of other people have had the same idea. That's why there have been a number of mills built to handle the ore put out by the small mines. And today, all but the Lost Creek Mill are owned by one man. Miles Renfro. That's right. Now, do you really believe that you have the resources, the ability, the know-how to compete with him? And Miss Kelly, your father was the majority stockholder in the Lost Creek Mill. Now, you know the history of that operation better than I do. Well, if you mean the uh, dynamiting and accidents, yes, I do. The mine was finally bombed right out of business. 
Yeah, I'll get it. I'm uh, Miles Renfro. This is my superintendent, Sam Jacks. Wonder if I could come in for a minute. Come right in. Miss Kelly. Gentlemen. I hear you two lads are pretty good poker players. I am. I'm here to make a firm offer on the Lost Creek stamp mill. I'll give you three times what you invested in that poker game. You're not interested. Well, that's a handsome profit on a one-day investment. Hmm. Yeah, it sure is. I was still not interested. Well, how about you, Miss Kelly? You own more of them than they do. I wouldn't sell to you for any price. Well, I uh, hate to see young people go broke. Lost Creek's a hard luck operation, has been from the start. I know why the Lost Creek has been a hard luck operation. And why Mr. Beggs just quit and let the mill sit there. You see, Papa was too sick to run the mill himself. So Mr. Beggs ran it for him. Mr. Renfro tried to buy Mr. Beggs out. But of course he wouldn't sell. That's when the um, accident started. Now, wait a minute, Miss Kelly. There was a dynamite bomb that went off and just completely wrecked the engine room. After that, Mr. Bakes found dynamite under his bed, in his boots, even in his lunch bucket. Are you suggesting that I'm responsible? I know you are. Papa told me so. Well, you'd better not repeat that, not unless you want to be sued for slander. I wouldn't mind. It might even be fun. Well, uh... Thank you kindly for your hospitality. Nice neighbor. I wonder why Beggs had quit. Didn't know till now. All right. You want to run that stamp mill? You go right ahead. Oh, you better take some ponderosa hands with you, Stan Garth. No, no, we'll, we'll be all right. You sure? Yeah. Well, there's something else. Have you thought about where you're going to get the ore to process? Or, or? Uh, well, no, not exactly. Yeah, but, uh, no, we, we, we're just going to get to that right now. We're, uh, we're going to go in town and get started. We'll drop Miss Kelly off at the, at the hotel. Good thinking, the ore. Come. Oh, so did you hear what I hear? Bring me that brandy. Let's have a little more champagne while we talk business. Now, when I found out there was an association of independent mine owners, I wanted to get you together because I knew you'd want to hear what I have to say. Get it said. All right, Mr. Stone. Well, the way I understand it, you take your ore to one of Mr. Renfro's mills. You pay what he asks to have it processed, or you don't get it processed. Is that right? That's right. Well, we intend to change all that. In what way, Mr. Cartwright? So we're going to put the Lost Creek stamp mill back into operation. We're going to process your ore cheaper and faster than Renfro ever did. How much cheaper? 10% to start, maybe more if we can manage it. Well, now, you're kind of asking us to jump before we have a place to land, aren't you? And how do we know you're going to get it started? Well, we'll give you our word. <sighs> Operating the mill is a lot tougher than that. It takes a lot of experience and know-how. You bet it does. Well, I better be getting back to the mine. Look, all we want to know is do you want to have your ore processed 10% cheaper? Look, I can't speak for all the miners, but... Uh... As president of the association, I think I can speak for those that are here. See, we have a contract with Mr. Renfro. Now, if we make a written or a verbal agreement with you, and then you don't open that mill, why, Renfro's liable to raise his prices. Uh, when does this contract expire, Mr. Peterson? Eleven days. Look, I tell you what, if you're operating by then, why, get in touch with us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank Tip. Well, now, 
Now look, we just walked in. Mm -hmm. Hey, that look really fine clothes. Thank you, thank you. Really, really. <laughs> What's so funny? Now, nothing is that lilac water smells so pretty. So pretty. Oh. Keep it up, buddy. We're gonna have a bigger go around your head in the street yesterday. Mm -hmm. Hey. You know, th th there's something I've always wanted, that, that San Francisco dude look. Really sets a man apart. Keep it up. Keep it up. No, I'm serious. I, I like them garters. They hold up my sleeves. Oh. Hey, yeah. Um, there's something I want to talk to you about. Since we're only growling at each other anyway, I just want to bring it right on out in the open. Mm -hmm. We can go right here and talk, partner. We're taking Katie to dinner, right? Both of us? That's uh, right. Um, what about after? Uh, after what? After dinner. I've rented a buggy and I'm gonna take Katie for a ride and I don't think we need you along. <laughs> you know, that's remarkable. Mm. That's almost word for word what I was gonna tell you. Really? Yeah, but well, see, actually, Katie wants to go on that buggy ride with me. Will she tell you that? No, not, not in so many words, but a, a woman has a way of uh, looking at a man that just tells you everything you have to know. Oh, she looks at you that way, huh? Exactly. Exactly. Just like lightning, when it happens, it happens. I guess I'm out of luck. I don't suppose there's anything I could do to change it, huh? No, nope, not a thing. I probably should have told you before, save you all that money you spent on them new clothes. Well, thank you, buddy. Thank you. Well, you know what they say. Lucky in cards, unlucky in love. I don't know who said it, but he knew what he was talking about. Of course, there's a lot of their fish in the sea. I thought this would be a good place to talk. And maybe, yes, uh... Mr. Kennedy. Will you stop calling me mister? All right. Candy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I told Joe the way it was with you and me. I told him. Is Joe. Oh, easy, you with a buggy and a pretty girl. I just looked the same place I've always looked before and found you. If you'll excuse us for, for just a minute, I uh, I want to talk some business with my partner. Just just take a minute. I'll bring him right back. Excuse me. Having a good time out here, huh? Yeah. Why, you know, I sure am glad you're taking it this way. You're, you know, you're a good sport. I look, it's at least a falcon, too, you know. <laughs> How did you get out of the room? Out of the room? You're not gonna believe it. <laughs> I took the door now, Bob. <laughs> Kenny decided to take a walk. Boy loves long walks. He's kind of a nature lover at heart. I, I told him I'd take you back. But how nice. That's right. Oh, this is a hat It's kind of a pretty spot, I I like it here. It's very nice, Mr. Conklin. Hey, now look, honey. Why don't you stop calling me Mr. All right, Joe. 
Drop in and see how you fellas getting along. Yeah, we're getting along just fine. Yeah, we'll meet Peterson's deadline with no trouble at all. That a fact. You know, in Virginia City, the odds are three to one you won't make it, because both of you will be fighting over that Kelly gal. We wouldn't let anything like a lady get in the way of our friendship. Yeah, uh, not for a minute. I'm hearing, but I ain't believing. Listen, Paul's going to send some extra men over to help you guard. Yeah, what for? We don't need any help. Yeah, maybe not, but he's concerned about the miners that had to overpay Renfro. He wants to protect their interest, you know. Good enough. See you. I'll take you later. Now. Loafing again. Don't just stand there. Do something. Huh? I'm beginning to wonder who owns this mill. <laughs> I dream of Katie with a long blonde hair. La -da -da. I left work kind of early, didn't you? Uh, well, I had some uh, business in town. Oh. Yeah, Katie tells me you're going to take her buggy ride. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, she expressed the desire to spend a little time alone with me. Oh, did she tell you that? Well, not in so many words, but uh, there's a look a woman gives a man. You know. Yeah, I know. All right, good time. Thanks, partner. <laughs> I dream of Katie with the long blonde hair. La 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 thinking when we get the mill started, why don't, uh, why don't you and I take a little trip to San Francisco? Oh, I'd love to go to San Francisco. I've never been there before. Oh, you'd love it. It's a great town. I know all the best places to take you. I'm just the one to show you. I'm sure. And it's all settled. Well, not quite. Well, not quite. Why not? Because I'd like to know just a little bit more about our trip. Oh, about this trip? Well, uh, we take the stage to Sacramento and... Uh, Take the boat to San Francisco. Yes. And then what? Then we get a couple of rooms in the finest hotel. Yes. And then? Uh, then we, uh, well, then we'll have some dinner, champagne, a little pâté de foie gras. And then? Yeah, and then, uh, then we'll just relax and enjoy ourselves. Joe. Would we see anybody? See anybody? No. Anyone official. O official? <clears throat> Why, uh, on a on a trip like that, I, I really don't think we should see anybody. I understand. Good. And then it's all settled. Let me think about it. Call it quits for today. Where are you going? Well, I gotta 
got a date. I want to get into the hotel, clean up a little bit. Oh. Have a good time, partner. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I'll do that. Coming, partner. Coming, coming, coming. Now, take it easy. Will you take it easy? I haven't opened in a minute. Katie, I've been thinking. How would you like to take a trip to Denver? I'd love to go to Denver. I've never been there before. Oh, it's a great place. I'd, uh, I'd show you a real good time. You would be going too? Well, well yeah, that was the idea. <laughs> Sounds interesting. What all do you have in mind? B uh, well, uh, for starters, we'd... Uh... Put up at the finest hotel. Yeah, with the finest. Have champagne, pâté de foie gras. Well, yeah, sure. And afterwards, we'd just sort of relax and enjoy ourselves. Oh, absolutely. Candy. Hmm? Would we, at any time, see anybody official? Oh, a trip like this? No, I should say not. I didn't think so. Is it a deal? Let me think about it. You tell your pa there's absolutely nothing to worry about, and you come back and see me Tuesday. Goodbye. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Like what? Like little Joe and Candy. They fight over that girl. They beat on each other until the dog tired. Then they go out that stamp mill and work like nothing ever happened. Will they have it running on time? The way they're going, they will. Stop them. They got a 24-hour armed guard out there now. It won't be easy. Easy or not, get it done. I'll try Riley. He's enough Indian to get in close, and he's the best man I know with dynamite. For we... Yeah, this is the day. <laughs> hey, we finally got the meal ready to operate. Just as good as. A few more little things will be done tomorrow. Oh, yeah. We're way ahead of the deadline, Peterson said. Way ahead. Oh, great. I propose a toast to success. 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 Mm. You and Candy have turned over a new leaf, I think, huh? What do you mean? Well, you haven't had a fight in at least two hours. No, that we took a day off. In your honor and to celebrate finishing the mill. Uh, besides, I was so far ahead, I decided to take a vacation. Well, why don't you give us a real break and take a vacation, leave the lady and I alone for a while. Oh, would you like to discuss a little um, further, Brad? I think it's just about time for some fried chicken, huh? Okay, chicken first. There you go. Yes, ma'am. Where's the salt? Oh, right here. Oh, 
Oh, my goodness, I forgot it. Oh, I have some in my room. Oh, Thank you, Lily. Well, we're gonna bring Peterson out here tomorrow and let him take a look at the place, huh? Oh, yeah. One looks all I need to be begging to sign on the dotted line. so tight. Oh, the doctor said it had to be tight in order for it to heal. Hearing it is not four days now, and it hurts more. The doctor said it would. How's the patient doing? He's cranky, but improving. You hurting a lot, buddy? <laughs> a little. And the work? How's it going? Come along fine. We got things pretty well put together. Well, do you think you'll be able to make the repairs in time? There's only two days left. Yeah, I think we can. The only thing we're having trouble with is this old broken cogwheel. This, this you cannot fix. Well, is there any way we can run the mill without it? No. Can't fix it, we'll buy a new one. Yes, you can buy a new one in Philadelphia. In Philadelphia? Yes. Monarch Foundry in Philadelphia is the only place that part is made. And that'll take a month to get here. We're out of business, partner. No, not yet. Well, we can't fix it and we can't buy one, so we'll, uh, we'll make a new one. Make one of these? How? It's cast iron. We'll use a foundry. Aren't you forgetting that Renfro has the only working foundry in this town? I don't think he's going to help us. We use Hanson's foundry. Hanson's foundry's been closed for over a year, Joe. So we'll open it. <laughs> we don't know anything about casting iron. But I know a man who does. Tell us what to do, Mr. Carwright, and we'll do it. Joseph? You ever made a coke fire? Hmm? No, sir, I haven't. Well, you're going to make one before the day is older. Now, uh, Hanson said there was some coke and pig iron back of this place that's out there. Joe, you and Candy bring some in. Right. Yeah. Now, you and I better bring in that broken casting that we'll use as a pattern. I hope we can find a flask. Flask? Not your kind of flask. You know, the kind of hold the wet sand we'll use as a form. I think we're in luck. Yeah, but the right size, too. And all Riley could do with his dynamite was break one casting? He did more than that. He busted up the mill and he busted up Ludwig. But little Joe and Candy have got the mill put back together again. All except that casting. What about Ludwig? He's not hurt so bad he can't tell little Joe and Candy what to do. And they doubled the guards at the mill. Three Ponderosa hands packing shotgun around the clock. Cartwrights can't make that casting before the mine owner's contract runs out. Can they? Common sense says they can't, but the Cartwrights don't seem to operate on common sense. Well, then we'd better be on the safe side. I want you to get me a couple of men that are handy with guns. You going against Scott Wright? Yes, I'm going to make sure that the Lost Creek stamp mill never opens for business. The 
take it home. Yeah. Let that thing slip. You got it, Joe? Better? Yeah. Joe, what looks that heavy there? Easy. Stop pumping his billers now, ain't it? I can't. I think you better keep that furnace hot just in case. What do you mean? There could be something wrong with this one? A very good chance. To, uh, to talk a little business. Oh? What kind of business? Uh, well, you you are the major stockholder in the Lost Creek Mill, I assume. Yes, I am. Um, why don't we talk at lunch? I'd uh, be honored to have you as my guest. Well, I'd like that very much. We don't have time. We've got all night. Keep those bottles going. Hoss, let's pour another four. Thank you. It was very nice. Yeah, it was. Five minutes. Hmm. Sure doesn't take much to spoil one of those things, does it? All of you, get them up. You too. On your feet. Well, I didn't think we'd meet again so soon, Mr. Cartwright. Those guns on Virginia City. Well, not unless you force us to in order to protect my property. I'm here to evict trespassers. Mr. Hansen needed money. I needed another foundry. So I bought this one. Lock, stock, and sand on the floor. You didn't buy that cogwheel. That's right, I didn't. I will take that with us. Well, of they? course, but... In the same shape it was in when you brought it in here. Mr. Jax, if you'll uh, take care of that. Sure, Mr. Andrew. Glad to. That will do nicely. Good poker players ought to know when to cash in their chips. You should have sold when I was uh, ready to buy. Now all you can do is pick up the pieces and get out of here. Yeah, well, I uh, guess we know when we're late. That's very wise, Mr. Cartwright. You not only respect law and order, you know when to throw your hand in. 
What? I, uh, I suggest we get all our things together and take everything that belongs to us. Easy now. You'll pay for this, Cartwright. I'll have you all up for assault and battery. I'll have you in court. You do that, Mr. Renbro. You'll be the laughing stock of Virginia City. Now, there's the door. Get out. Swiss watch. Oh, congratulations, gentlemen. You know Mr. Peterson. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Hi. It's uh, nice to see you here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We've been um, discussing the stamp mill. <laughs> oh, <laughs> stamp mill. That's our partner, huh? Well, I guess you're ready to sign a few contracts with us, then, huh? No, but I, uh, I am ready to offer you a very profitable uh, deal. A deal? Yeah, you see, the mine owners are very anxious to have Lost Creek in operation to prevent Renfro from continuing his monopoly. So, yeah. but they uh, they seem to feel you're better cattlemen than uh, mill operators. <laughs> yeah, I seem to remember somebody saying that. A fellow named Ben Cartwright. Yeah, nice man. <laughs> so the mine owners are willing to buy your stock at a handsome profit for you, and then uh, have Ludwig and some others run it. Uh, what about Katie's stock? Well, Miss uh, Miss Kelly's already sold her stock to the association. So. Uh, you might as well sell yours. Uh, you'd have little or nothing to say about it, being minority holders. Do yeah. uh, you mind if we talk this over for a minute? No. Well, I, I don't mind selling my stock at a nice profit. I'd much prefer to be a cattleman. But I think you could have had the courtesy to, to come to us and, and tell us first. We're your partners, your friends. Yeah, well, we were friends. That's all you were. Yeah, we're good friends. I mean, I'm going to take you to San Francisco. Oh, oh no, wait a minute. She was going with me to, to uh, Denver. Well, I think you'll let the lady decide. I think San Francisco would be the town. Well, I think you're you both her. wrong. I'm going to Sacramento with Mr. Peterson. Um, with uh, uh, Peterson? On our honeymoon. Honeymoon? Neither of you suggested it, but Ivar has asked me to be his wife. We're being married the first of the month. I don't suppose there's any use in me trying to talk to you and let me handle it, huh? Yeah, no, I, I don't suppose. Well, this time you take the big one and I'll take the little one. Yeah, and the one who finishes first? Yeah, right. right. Now, Mr. Pearson, that uh, stock deal will be just fine. Sign the papers tomorrow. Oh. Good time, in Sacramento. Thank you.
ahead, stranger. Is this is Ponderosa land. That makes you the stranger, doesn't it? No, that's Cartwright land. Now, just who might you be? I'm Joe Cartwright. Riding out this way looking for strays. Well, you found one. I'm obliged to you for a bed down, a mess of beans, and the use of your coffee pot. Uh, you're welcome to it, if, uh, if that's all you're after. That's all I need. This here air, that there sun making a blue shadow mystery of what's over the next rise. Hey, that's a mighty fine piece of horse you got there. Thank you. Lean in the withers. Chest like a big stave oak barrel. I had one just like it. Till he, uh, gave up his life saving me in an old Comanche raid outside of Miss Tizo. Yeah, those fine folk uh, over there gave me this here old watch. For services rendered that day. That's a good looking watch. Man can't ride a watch. Where's your horse? Found it back a ways. Crowbait. Not like this one. Oh, I sure do miss that other fellow. One man horse. Nobody could ride him but me. Same with this one. Oh, I never seen a horse I couldn't ride. Yeah, well, you're looking at one now, mister. Let's see. Hey, wait a minute. This horse can make that ridge in 10 seconds flat from a standard start. Yeah, well, sure, he's fast enough. That watch of mine's got a second hand on it. Look, that's, that's my horse you're sitting on, mister. Oh, you're a fine-looking specimen. I trust you with my watch. And my rifle. All right, you're on. Get ready. Go! For you play pretty. Now bring it over. Now. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. Now that ain't social you running from me. Sit. Let me be. I ain't such a much. Let me be. You all I got play pretty. Now be nice and do what you got hired to do. Sit. <laughs> I guess that pretty little girl already done what she gets paid for. Back off, mister. She's my play. I'm the original ringtail roar. More like a ringtail baboon, I'd say. Did he pay for that 40 rod? No. Now, ain't that forgetful? Now, give him his gun. He'll use it. Well, I guess a man has to make these life and death decisions every day. Now, go on, give it to him. Now, get out of here.
obliged. What for? Man needs a bit of muscle stretching after a long day's ride in the saddle. I never had no men fighting over me before. Why not? Well, truly, I ain't such a much. No, that's a terrible thing to say about one of my friends, especially if she reminds me of Snowflower. Snowflower? Indian princess, daughter of Chief Thundercloud. I met her when I was scouting for General Crook. She made a fine bride, till she got killed. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't be. She died proud and happy, fighting alongside her daddy. My daddy wasn't no chief. He just fought being poor, never had no shoes even. Cut me a five-toed track to church every Sunday, I did. I bet you walked real proud. Just resentful. My old daddy had them dreams. We all got to have them dreams, gal. Never come true. Bought herself a piece of bottom land and the river came and washed it away. Homesteaded some rich prairie. Drought come and that old homestead just, just went. Guess he died reaching for a fistful of air. He had you. That was riches enough. <laughs> no, it didn't. I run away. Heading for San Francisco, I got as far as here and I went bust. And that's why you're working here. Working and waiting. My daddy won 500 in a poker game before some tin horn cashed him in for good. But it's coming here at the Virginia City Bank. Now, ain't that a rainbow wish come true? Yeah. Well, I got important business waiting. Going to be the end of my rainbow, too. That's nice. Are you all put together? He'll come back. Me too. All you gotta do is holler Baudry come running. That's a nice looking horse you got there. It's tolerable. He'll do to the next one. Are you, uh, you plan to get the next one the same way you got this one? I don't follow your friend. <laughs> you don't follow me, huh? <laughs> of course you don't. I follow you. Right down there to the sheriff's office. you up years ago. Ben Cartwright, you are a sight for saddle sore eyeballs. You know him. Know him? Yes, we know each other. We uh, had some dealings here and there. Hey, baby, gospel, baby. <laughs> you old tiger. You. you remember the time you were standing up a whole battalion of Santa Anna's best? Oh. <laughs> Just to kiss that slow-eyed senior in a goodbye? <laughs> long time ago, boy. Long time ago. Long, long road. Yeah. Say, which one was she now? Teresina or, or Margarita? Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, this is a little bit of your past you ain't got around to tell us about, ain't it? Oh, Ben here never was much for talking. <laughs> Just doing. And if this here young bull's your son, you did all right. Yeah. Uh, ask him about your other son. He came in riding Joe's horse. <laughs> yeah. Nobody ever tell you? It ain't polite to interrupt when men are talking? Here's your gun, boy. Now, this here Tad's under the impression that uh, I stole that old hay burner. 
Yeah, I've been waiting for you to tell me how you came by him. Well, your son uh, told me his name. I saw your brand on, uh, on his horse. And I just couldn't resist having a little fun. So I boxed him. How'd you ride him? And better than that, how'd you get him away from little Joe? Yeah, I think I know how. You pulled that old watch trick on him, didn't you? Yes, sir, <laughs> I sure did. Just like Stephen Rea did before he got himself hung. <laughs> ben, um, what do you say we sweep from the hinges of our tarsals over the saloon? Oh, there's plenty of time for that once we get to oh, the Ponderosa. Come on, Ben. Oh, she'd take that wagon and uh, Candy, see if you can find little Joe, give him a ride home. Bo and I got a lot of talking to do. Come on. <laughs> Supper for some time yet. Could you use a sandwich? Well, I just might. Good. How many? One. Good. If you split the loaf down the long way. I sure did a terrible thing to you. What do you mean, a guest? Well, this is old Baudry. Come on. Come on, get up. <laughs> hey, well, well, old Baudry stole my horse. I've been walking for two and a half hours. I got blistered feet. Yes, I... Not bad. <laughs> right in the button. Look, this is Baudry. These are the youngest, the pride and joy. Joseph, this is old Bo. Shake on, shake hands. How do you do? Yeah. <laughs> I heard that he uh, pulled the old watch trick on you. <laughs> yeah, it was real funny, real funny. Of course, I, uh... I threw in a bit of schooling in the bargain, seeing he was the son of my old compadre. Yeah, schooling? What do you mean, schooling? Well, now you know, never face down a stranger with both your hands so busified, you're at the mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Here, come on. Get upstairs and soak your feet. Yeah, let me go get upstairs and soak my head. <laughs> Here, if you're watch. If you don't mind, I'll take my horse back. He's a good horse. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He, uh, he hits pretty good, Ben. Yeah? Yeah, he's, uh, he's all right. One of the best. What about you? You still hitting pretty good, too? Boudreau, you still that yonder man looking for what's beyond that next rise? Nope. I'm going to settle down and build me a spread, like you did, Ben. You're not. You're not going to tie down. Why not? You did. Why not me? Oh, you'd find it too dull. Last time I heard you were drifting cattle across the Rio Grande to the banditos. Gorillas, Ben. One man's hero is another man's traitor. Oh, I might have been on a few Texas one posters, all right. But south of that river, I was a real caballero. You ride up that cut to Miraflores, don't be surprised to find a big statue of Baudry gracing the town square. Ha! <laughs> I'm going to tell you something, Baudry. Nothing about Baudry would ever surprise me. <laughs> I'm going to get those sandwiches. <laughs> Yes, senor. Howdy. There's water in the bucket. Step down. Take a drink. I think I will. Many tracks for such a lonely place, huh? There are quite a few. Before I came, a man walked to this cabin. One road, then one rides away, and the other one walks. But the man who walked away 
It's not the one who walked here. You read track pretty good. Oh, something to do. You know. A man that interested in tracking is usually looking for somebody. Isn't somebody always looking for somebody? There is a man I would like to see. He comes this way from Chris Montana. He's a big man. Stands tall, much hombre. Have you seen a man like this on the trail? The man you're looking for is, um, uh, is he on the run? From who? From you, maybe. From me? <laughs> uh, <laughs> if he comes from the north and I come from the south, how could he be on the run from me, hmm? It's a good question. You know, I think this friend of mine, uh, he went to Virginia City. I've never been there. I think I will go there myself. Fine. Would you close the door when you leave? Hey. You never took your drink of water. I decided I wasn't thirsty. <laughs> Adios. Hasta luego. Yes, sir, a hawk in the sky, a big horned goat, jumping from peak to peak like there was little clumps of clay. Yes, Ben, that was me. Oh, Ben, the world squeezing down like, like some little tad's leaking balloon. Every man's entitled to at least one crack at a big dream. You had yours and you made it work. Well, sweat made it work, Bo. That and the need to settle down. Sure. Ponderosa for you and Miraflores for me. Mexico? No, I got the beginnings right here, Ben. I know $500 ain't much, but maybe it's enough for a down payment. You got the kind of bees I need, Ben. Now, I know under ordinary circumstances, it, it ain't much, but you and me, Ben. Yeah, well, uh... Baudry, you, you sure that's what you want? I changed, Ben, believe me. I'm not asking to use you. I'm asking you to invest. Miraflores, huh? Mr. Curry, I went all the way out to the cab and I didn't see any sign of Joe. Oh! <laughs> yeah, well, he, uh, he found his way here. <laughs> he walked all the way. He's upstairs soaking his feet right now. Just so he got here, all right. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Baudry, I ran into a man I think is looking for you. He's a Mexican, he's a big man, very dark, soft-spoken. Do you know him? No, 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 I don't, Caddy, no. Well, I, uh, I got some miles of fence to ride. I'll get to it. Fine, thank you, Candy. Yeah. So, Miraflores, huh? And I'm not gonna let you jump, Ben. You think about it for a few days. Well, I don't see how I'm gonna be able to turn my back on you. Just the same. You think about it. Now, there's a... A certain little lady at the Silver Dollar that I think I'll have a few words with. All right? <laughs> hey, uh, you're not going to walk all the way to Virginia City. And there's a bay in the barn. Help yourself. Thank you, Ben. All right. Ah, my tonsils is clacking like castanets. <laughs> <laughs> Here. Well, I got your message, and I and thought you came I... and running to help me trail the Baudry herd back down. <laughs> oh, amigo, I wish it were true. I really do wish it were true. Well, if you go back to Miraflores now, the orders are to kill you. What are you talking about? Kill me? Everything passes, hombre. 
things change. What's changed? Cardona. Cardona? How? I stole that white horse he rides. But that's in the past. We were heroes, yes. But now Cardona sits fat in a white suit in the palace of the Gobernador. And he wants no part of the old past. And what about the rest of them? The ones who put him there? You've got to understand, man. You win the throne of the Gobernador. And power makes enemies out of old friends. Cabeza de Vaca is dead. Cholo's on the run, still in the revolutionary profession. And do you know who he has to fight? Cardona. And you, Mitar? Oh, man gets old. He has to go where the grub is. Adios, viejo. Podre, amigo. I run the rurales for Cardona now. End of a dream. Don't make it into a nightmare. In the name of the old past, don't make me responsible for your hanging. Original Lone Wolf from Bitter Creek, and it's my night to home. <laughs> Maybe you had enough. I sure have, up to here. Hey, ain't there no action in this here town? Well, you sure are ready to fight the bear. Yeah. It don't it show, eh? Where the wild grizzly screams with scare when I crawl into his den. <laughs> Tom, you settle down. Yeah. There yeah. are Flores. Now, there's a place. Yeah, you got me a war bag full of dreams. Swing it on it. Wild running deer. Cold stream full of trout. Green grass so tender a man could eat. You been there? No. But I've been in all them saloons trying to get my daddy out before somebody really believed he was the original wild man from Bodie. Man's world. You need somebody to protect you. You done that already. I want a bottle. Not from you. Her. Look, I don't want trouble. And you tell her to serve me. The trouble is, old Ben won't give me no breeding cattle if there ain't no mere flores. You earned your pay, play pretty. I don't hear a thing. But I sure do smell something awful bad. Rosie! Rosie! Rosie, my sister! Huh? Stay right there, honey. Sheriff. Oh, that's a lie. I don't care who started it. It stops now. Do you understand? You boys are lazy white hands, ain't you? Yeah, all but him. Three of them. 
And he was doing fine until the roof fell on him. Well, you're gonna be late getting back. Cause you're going to jail for a spell. Him too? Him too. Come on, let's pick him up and go. Get them all out of here, Sheriff. Get them out Come of on, here. Come on, boys, move. Yeah, yeah. Rosie, from there. I can guess why I'm in this here Iron Hotel. What are you doing here? Sheriff let me in. After the lazy wife foreman paid damages to get his hands loose. How you feel, Bo? <laughs> oh. oh, uh... How long have I been out? This ain't no place for the likes of you. That same thought just come to me, too. It's like caging a big old eagle. What's that? Five hundred dollars. I got my inheritance. You'll probably have to pay something to get out of here. <laughs> That's your getaway money, gal. If I take that, what do you, how are you going to make San Francisco? I'm a yonder man, Noreen. The way I move. I might not be coming back for some time. Please, take my money. That won't be necessary. No, sir, not while I got my own 500. Oh, no, you're gonna need that 500 to pay me for those beeves I'm selling you. Well, what about the damages? The Lazy R's ramrod said that his men admitted they were in the wrong, so uh, they're gonna stand the damages. You're in the clear. Get your hat. Well, what about her? Oh, stagecoach leaves in two days. I got my job till then. You ain't got the talent for that kind of job, Noreen. Man, she's a milksop calf. Now, Bo, natural born target for every hog leg buster in the territory. Well, Noreen, uh, you can come out to the ranch and stay there till you're ready to leave for San Francisco if you want to. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. <laughs> the land we rode over, up there, to the mountains and beyond, Ponderosa land. Yes, sir, old Ben Cartwright sure did build his other spread. Better don't hold a candle to Miraflores. Oh, Miraflores ain't such a much. It will be once you take hold. Ain't nothing you can't do, Baudry. I've been thinking a man gets to settle down, he's gonna want a woman to back him up. There are plenty of those Pretty little Chiquita's below the border, just waiting to be lassoed. But you throw a long loop, too. I never did build me no reputation, being a one-woman man. Wouldn't make no difference to me. Well, settle down roosters got astray a bit, but they always come back to the home roost. My, my. It's a lot of known coming from spring chicken. It ain't how long you lived. It's what you've done with the living you used up. Well, when you get to San Francisco... Well, I ain't got no reason to go to San Francisco. Got me a reason to go someplace else. Where? Near Flores with you. It's getting late, Noreen. It's never too late to buy into a dream, Baudry. I got that $500 and it's yours for the asking. I don't want to go it alone no more. Please take me with you. You don't know what you'd be letting yourself in for. I don't care. Because I know I... I wash out pail against all them hot-eyed senoritas. Noreen. Right now, 
they don't hold a candle to you. straight in the eye and said he didn't know this Charlo. Next thing I know, he's fallen all over him. Well, maybe it was a mistake. No, I don't think it was a mistake. What about this friend of his that he doesn't know so well? Huh? He's a uh, Mexican, mid-40s, uh, dark, soft-spoken man. Do you have anything on him on the posters? Well, not that I remember, but let's take a look. All right. Howdy. Roy Coffey's my name. Deputy Stryker. Glad to know you. What can we do for you? Hey, you've come a long way. I've met shorter rides. And uh, this Mr. Kennedy, we all call him Candy. Candy. Hi. This man's from Crease, Montana. Crease? I'd say you were looking for a man named Baudry. That's the name on the warrant. I had a man named Baudry locked up in jail here for busting up three cowboys in a saloon all by himself. Now, could that have been him? That's Baudry. Which way do you go? He's uh, at the Ponderosa Ranch. I'll show you. No, I don't want to put you out, none. No trouble. Come on. Well, you got faith in him. You believe in him, you're giving him a stake. Oh, well, that's different. <laughs> See, there was a time on the pendant Alice when I was as good as dead. And, and he saved your life? You know, 50 beeves is little enough to pay for something like that, isn't it? Ain't that something? Willing to sacrifice himself for you. Oh, I... I don't know about that. I was never really sure. Maybe it was because he was one against 12 bloodthirsty Comancheros. Maybe that was challenge enough. So was Miraflores. So was San Francisco. For you. I ain't got no reason to go there now, Mr. Cartwright. I never had nothing all my life. And now I got him. I'm heading out with Baudry. Well. Well, well, well. Did he, uh... Did he ask you to, to go along with him? Good ass. Miraflores. Rough country. It's a whole lot different from what you've been used to. Oh, I don't care about that. All I care about is him. Why are you telling me? You're his friend. I, I, I thought... I was hoping you'd be happy for him. For, for both of us. Of course. Of course. Well, I better go back. Won't do to keep Bolger waiting. Stryker! You old poor! 
Oh, can you? <laughs> I said it was an idea, boy. I didn't say it was a good one. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, pure porcupine, that boy. Quills out all the time. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of you when you were young, Mo. And that there is a compliment. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, uh, somebody hung it too bad, don't you? Yeah, I'm uh, deputing out of crease these days. Fact is, I'm here on business. I reckon you know what it is. Listen, you'd never believe who's uh, who's running this spread, you know. Ben Cartwright. Oh, Ben? Yeah. Why, I haven't seen him since he took the salute after the battle of Cerro Bosco. <laughs> and up rides this lad to the camp cook. Now he's got scare oozing out of every pore. He says, the line's broke. Run for your life, lady. The banditos are coming. <laughs> yeah, well, she just hauls off and whacks him clean out of that saddle with a big old fry pan. <laughs> now she said, you've got a choice to make here, boy. You can either get killed by them or by me. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you hear that story? <laughs> that was me. She hit with her fry pan. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you said you had some business to discuss, Striker. <laughs> oh? Well, ain't you never gonna learn? You're, uh... You're not talking about Chris Thorson, are you? He give you a job on those steers in the crease. And I delivered him like you said. And you run off with Thorson's 500. Well, I just figured for a loan. You didn't tell him. Why, I blew more than that in one night having a bus with Chris. That time we came down from the Canadian with all them belts. More than a thousand dollars in one night. Times change, man. Fun's fun, but this is business. Tell you what, Bo, you give me the money. I'm sure he'll be willing to forget the old thing for old time's sake. And if I don't? Then I'll have to bring you back to Crease and make you stand trial for cattle thieving. I think you better give him back that money. I was going to give it back as soon as I got set up in Miraflores with all those cattle you were running. Deal is off. Give it back. Ben! Give it back. You better make your peace, Beldry. Ain't no running room left these days. I helped you tame a few towns, Stryker. Hey, come to this. Those were the old times. The good times. Now all I got is a war bag full of memories. And this here badge. And just a job keeping it. Seventy-five a month and found. Working for the storekeepers as runs the towns. I'll see you, Ben. Eat those cattle, Ben. I can still make it below the border. After all we've been through, I ain't asking for charity, Ben. You don't need it. Baldry, I got $500. Now, you can count it if you want to, but I want to buy a piece of Miraflores, too. Looks like the deal's still on, Ben. Final business. Baldry, holler when you're ready. My girl. Yeah, they made her. They busted the mold. <laughs> well, that is 50 heads worth. What 
do it here? Come on, I'll break it out. Tell Mr. Carver. He forced me, compadre. He was going to take me to the sheriff. My Rale badge means nothing here. You know that. I can't cause no incident. This is the man Baudry said he didn't know. He has something to say I think you ought to hear. It's Matar. Hmm. Matar! Do you remember me, senor? Yes. From Miraflores? Of course I do, of course I do. What are you doing up here? I came to... to warn Baudry. Warn him about what? Tell him. Well? Baudry's got a price on his head in Miraflores. If he goes back down there, they'll kill him. He's my friend. I... I had to warn him. I hurt Ben. You? No, not me. Maybe Noreen. What about her? I need her. She's going to help me settle down. You settle down? You're going to be on the run for the rest of your life. Striker squared things in Montana. What have I got to run from? I'll tell you what you got to run from. Yourself. I need them bees, Ben. A deal's a deal. You got no choice. You have a choice. Them beeves. Or that girl. Well, they don't mean nothing without that girl left to believe in me. I need her, Ben. Now, what do you do when you've run through her money? And when you've used her up? How's she gonna feed on those glory tales of yours when you leave her behind to go up yondering again? I won't leave her. Well, you can tell her that. Maybe she'll believe you, but I don't. Audrey, you're a liar. Oh. <laughs> Get up on your feet! Call me a liar! Oh, no, stop it! Don't! Please. Get out of my way! Uh. You're still faster with your fists than with your head, aren't you? Well? That's all right, Bo. Look, just you and me. Five hundred dollars can get us clear out of here. No, Maureen. Nobody puts a brand on Baudry. You need me, Bo. I got things to do and places to go, and I aim to be free, and I got no need for nobody. Change his mind. Well, Noreen, Baudry's a man who never looks back. What's ever going to happen to him? Mr. Cartwright, do you think he'll ever settle down? I don't know. Hope so. By the way, the Perrys will be waiting for you when you get to San Francisco. They're nice, quiet folks, and they'll see that you get the right start. Thank you. Bye-bye. Spoil the goodbyes. But I want to say goodbye to you, Ben. Does 
the bees are in the northwest pasture. You better take them along with you. Oh, Ben. Not for old time's sake. But the fights we once had, and the one we didn't have. All right, Ben. What about you? You going with him? Si, senor. A man has to have a compadre along. Someone he understands. Swap lies with. <laughs> Adiós. 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 How much of Baudry is a lie and how much of them is really the truth? I don't think even Baudry could answer that.